And we're live. We're back from round two. Round two. Of Friday Night Magic, presented by Dayton Magic Club, uh, here at Game Haven. Where, what do you do? What do you do at Game Haven? You get more for your games. You do a sack, get more for your games. I'm Ryan Johnson. I'm Noah Ross. We are back, and we have uh, a pretty sweet match, we think, for you guys. Yep. Uh, we scouted out the room uh, and found the sweetest decks, and we're going <laughs> to get those on camera tonight. Some fresh uh, blood. Absolutely, some fresh blood. So we have uh, Kyle McDaniel, perennial local grinder. Mm -hmm. uh, Brewmaster. Brewmaster Kyle McDaniel. Uh, he took this brew to Cleveland where he got uh, a feature match. He did. Uh, at SCG Cleveland. And uh, had a pretty good day until he got the future match, mold to four in game three, and just got rolled. Mm. That happened. Very few can overcome the mold to four. Yes, that was, that was savage. Uh, but he is playing sort of a green-black mid-range. I don't like to call it the rock. Because uh, the rock, to me, is like 20 creatures, 20 spells, 20 land. It's got some removal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of an aggro control deck. And this is kind of similar to that, but it's much more of a mid-range deck. The Pebble. That is uh, that is our content manager, Joe, <laughs> that is there cool. in the booth providing us with is adorable. up to the second live information about the matches, because we have no idea what any of the Theros cards are exactly. or what they do, because we're professionals. There's Kyle. He's going to have 60 cards in his deck to start the game. That seems really strong. It's effective. Uh, so there's a couple, uh, you know, this deck it, it, it's that, that Kyle's playing, uh, uh, it's got Reaper of the Wilds. Okay. It's got Whiff of Erebos. Okay. It's got a Lifebane Zombie. Okay. Yeah, it's good stuff. So, uh, and then as to what my brother was playing, I'm not 100% sure. We're going to find out. I believe that he's playing some sort of Selesnia uh, mismatch. Mid range, yeah, yep. yeah. Or aggro, really. It's a, yeah. You know, the, it, the Selesnia decks are pretty <laughs> aggro y. They can be a little mid rangey. It, it's adorable how they're calling the mid range, even though it's just the best. It's just like costing three creatures. power creatures for two. It's not their fault. They're and like huge. four mana creatures they can't for help three. It. It's, yeah, he's, he's definitely playing the list. Mike Barlow on the play. Kyle Look showing off Kyle. his hand for the camera. There is some Man. juice in that hand. The thought sees a removal spell and a lot yeah, of troll. A lot of that's troll. about as good as he can curve out here. It's going to feel nice. Uh, he's got some great, interesting interactions where he can play with a lot of troll, discard creatures to pump it up, and then whip a Veribos the creatures back into play in the late game to start like grinding them down. Mm -hmm. and I expect you, that is his plan. So we have a Celestine Guildgate into play tapped. Yes. As they tend to do. Kyle's going to open with a thought seize. Let me thoughtsies. see what you got. Let's. Oh, Boon Seder. What's that little fella? What's he got there? Is that a what soldier of Pantheon? It looks like a soldier. Soldier Pantheon has been really impressive to me every time yes. I've seen it, and I know that you have some experience playing with it. It's been pretty good for you. It's been great. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, it is the latest Savannah Lion that we've gotten. Um, two one for one white. Uh, but this one comes with a little extra. Yeah, what's that? What's uh, it's got protection from multicolor, which is fantastic. Considering we in, just came off a Ravnica block, that seems uh, like it might exactly be really good. over you know half the cards are multicolor, so that feels really good. And then it has the you know core Firewalker ish uh, life gain, uh, where if uh, anyone plays a multicolor spell, go ahead and gain a life. That seems really good. Actually, I think it's just opponents. This is going to be it's a lot less troll. This is lot less troll go. While I troll to your empty board, see if it's fine. He says, my board's not empty anymore. That is a... That's a 3-3 uh, three, three centaur coming your way. Oh! Boom! That doesn't look like a centaur, but they're different in Japan. <laughs> but there it is. A Japanese centaur. They're prettier. They look like Americans. Oh, that's nice. That's true. I like it. So, we got... Uh... I was thinking, he says, I'm going to tap two and go ahead and play. What is that? Man, we just don't know what any of these cards do. I think it's a scavenging use. No. What is it does play scavenging use. Uh, Joe, could you give us a, a quick hit as to what uh, that was? Yep, it's it is scavenging use. It's the promo. It's the promo. Crashing for three, no he's, fear. He's swinging because he's got something. He's got something. He's cooking. Oh, oh. He's thinking about it. Oh. Uh, what's it it takes be? three because it's... Oh, uh, locks it on Smiter. So doing what you do with this with this green-white deck. Exactly. Just, all you guys are just real big. They don't really do anything special, but they're just big yes. and they're just dumb and exactly. they're just big. So, like we were talking about earlier in round one, you know, the green-white deck aims to be fast enough to beat the control decks, 
but bigger than the other aggro decks. Exactly. So that's your edge. You know, you just play bigger guys every point on the curve. There you a real go. centaur token. Get that out of here. From our uh, content coordinator and webmaster Fritz over there with the tokens. Mm -hmm. Kyle says, go ahead. You know, uh, while the troll, really good against these big dumb guys that don't trample. Exactly. So he can just... For now. Yeah. For now. He says, swing in. He says... Block, block. I don't think Kyle has the creatures in hand to trade here, but he does have an abrupt decay. He does. He not only has that, uh, his scavenging use can eat the boon Seder and get yep. a little bigger. And he, yep, Boom. that's what's going to happen here. And probably fine to just make that trade when you're Kyle in this matchup. You Looks have to be a little like more of a control just, There you go. He says, eat that guy right there. Oh. What did he do? He discarded a creature. I don't know what he discarded. It's yeah. off camera at this moment. That's all right. But he discarded a man. It looks like he's going to do it again. He's got a 4 3. And he has enough mana to actually regenerate. Yeah, exactly. Which is a pretty good block uh -huh. from this state. And, and, plus now, he, and now he has another creature. To ooze. Yeah, see the, can, you see these synergies in this see, deck. See, Kyle is a good player. So. He's a good player. And this deck lets. He's going to see these lines and. Look. Like, a minute ago, we saw this board where Kyle was just getting kind of pushed over by these bigger creatures, and yep. all of a sudden, he's so far ahead. Uh oh Is that a... That looks like a God's Willing. God's Willing, yep. That was kind of cool with the name. And God's Willing, of course... It gives a protection from any colors, Cry 1. That is pretty good, but still not a bad turn for Kyle. No. He's still going to get to eat the Centaur token, eat keep the centaur, his Lotlith troll... Keep it a Lotlith troll. And... Uh, Force Barlow to burn a card. Yep. A good card. A very good very, card in this uh, matchup. Yeah, in this matchup, that could be the difference between... That's a counterspell in this yeah. matchup. A counterspell, scry one. Yeah. Like, that is not bad. They're supposed That's supposed to cost three. Yeah. That's supposed <laughs> to cost three. So, good turn from Kyle. Although, I'm not counting Mark Barla out yet. This oh. is about where his heavy hitters come online. Temple Garden Untapped. Wonder what he's I got. wonder what that means. <laughs> That means a 5-5, five five, if I know anything about yeah. magic, which I don't. But a couple months ago, that was a 3-4 flyer. Yeah. Let's not forget. That's true. Which would be awesome right here. Yeah, pretty good. So, Kyle, Kyle knows, also knows. <laughs> that that is going to happen. I believe that's still an abrupt decay in his He's hand. He's still so he got just... that abrupt decay, yes. That looks like a Desecration Demon. Oh, that is a Desecration Demon. So Man, this deck is awesome. Munch another dude. And that was a Life Bane Zombie, it looks like, was the other one. This is uh, Liliana's Reaver. Oh, Liliana's Reaver. This deck is sweet. Kyle's a maniac. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm getting from this. This deck is sweet. He says, that's fine. But this is where the really scary threats from Mike Barlow get to come online. You're, you're yes. having a worms, you're, and then you can start uh, populating those, potentially. Your Tristani start to come online if he has those. Yeah. So, you know, this game is certainly not over, even though that turn was a big tempo swing in favor of, of the black-green Big tempo deck. swing. But this deck is built on synergies, and we're starting yep. to see its engine come online a little bit there. Just swinging in for four. It's a little poke. Swinging in. Barlow says whatever. Says that's fine. We'll we expect to see a worm here. Bluffing the worm. He's got a worm in hand. Got he chose not to. He chose not to because Kyle has a bunch of cards, yes. and he's like, "I don't want to just pay for it." To I, I like pass the turn. The untapped land as a way to to try to, to prevent. Even if you weren't planning on playing mm -hmm. it, it is. It made Kyle have to think about now. As a counter bluff, what you saw is by Kyle attacking into the four land. Yep, he's he's saying I have a removal spell for your worm token. Exactly. So we've seen a lot of. Well, it's not a, not completely the case because he has Lawless Troll as a as a discard function, and then he could throw yep. another creature in the graveyard That's and make true. his guy his his ooze a six six. There's a, there's a lot of this game is being played not on the table. Exactly. There's a lot of of, of game being played you know between the two players right now, and uh, it, it's certainly making. All the, the synergies in Kyle's oh. deck really apparent. That is another 3 3, no, three which was pretty three. good on turn two, yep. and it's starting to kind of lose some relevance. It does. It's one of the reasons that the Fleeceman Lion is so good, mm -hmm. because a Fleeceman Lion here is actually a indestructible 4 4, which would be exactly. really, really good. But a 3 3 body is not something it's not, to sneeze at. No. You, you can't uh, just complete. Oh, there you go. That's going to change the game here. Yep. Yep. And it's. Not looking good here. 
Playing the centaur may not have been the right call. Man, we're seeing going to see a lot of damage come in from Kyle this turn. It's interesting because I don't know what he has that. Oh, he's going to thought seize. Looks like I don't know yep. what he has that could cost three. That would be better than not. Oh, uh, yep. Amp. I bet he was expecting to block and pump. Yep. And the the thing is, is that the Celestia Charm is actually pretty good in this matchup if Kyle doesn't know about it because his guys can get that big. Yes. Celestia Charm is a great answer to a overzealous troll. Yep. Or an overzealous scavenger guess, but especially a troll because you can just snap it off right through every generation. Boom. So now Kyle can play around it. Kyle, uh, it would appear that he was already playing around Yes. It. It certainly is a pretty known says, card. One more ooze. You know, the second ooze is not nearly as good as the first. No. But um, and and, and Bravo's seen enough. That's enough. Okay. So Kyle's deck is sweet. Kyle's deck uh, is very friendly to itself. And here is an interesting point: your Lava Troll card. A lot of people thought was going to be a really big player in standard. Oh yeah. Never really found a home. There was that green black zombie deck. That everyone was really excited about for a minute. For a minute. Like you could discard grave crawlers to it, recast the grave crawlers. Like it seems like an obvious fit. Yeah, but it, it never really took off. Never caught on. The red black zombie was just a little more aggressive. Yes. Uh, you got and almost like, more resilient. Yeah, Falcon Wrath Aristocrat was a big deal. Falcon Wrath Aristocrat was a legit off the top rope force that had and to be dealt with. You could, you know, the red black version got to do things like run out your Dralf messengers, your grave crawlers, your Falcon Wrath Aristocrats, and just be like immune to removal. Yep. Like, you could never get those threats off the board. But those cards have all rotated. True. While the troll, this might be a good time for it. Mm -hmm. It is very good against the aggro decks. Very good. Because it blocks forever. And eventually, once you're put inside of gas, and it's been blocking forever, it, you discard a couple creatures, and now it's just the biggest guy in the room. Yes. It also has trample. Yeah, so, it does. So, you know, going head-to-head -head with the soldier of Pantheon is not going to be effective. That's true. And... It regenerates, which the new sweepers we have um, allow regeneration. Mm -hmm. It's good against Anger of the Gods. No. Anger of the Gods exhaust. It does. Unless it doesn't die. Right. And it's good against Supreme Verdict, so it might just be really well positioned right now. Well, Lawless Troll could uh, survive an Anger of the Gods pretty easily. Pretty easily. Would not be hard. Uh, considering that, you know, it's not going to come out until turn three. Right. Uh you know, you've drawn at that point, you know, two or three cards. You have an attempt to like, play them all out. Oh, you're going to do that? Well, I'll just discard Now my guy's like a five, so a six, and five, like, and you're dead. So now what happens? Yeah. yeah. So that might be a really well positioned card right now. I, I like it a lot right now, especially it's, with all of its new friends. And, you know, uh, scavenging use. We saw the, the synergy there was really good. We didn't get to see Whip of Erebos. I think Kyle plays one, if well. he still has it in the deck, but still sweet. Mm -hmm. um, scavenging use from M14 was. Uh, what was that originally in? I can't remember. Uh, Commander. Commander. One of the Commander, the Commander All Star. Um, the zillion dollar card. Yep. That comes to comes home to roost. You're Mike Barlow. Okay. What do you have for this matchup? What do you? What's good here? <clears throat> well, uh, I don't know exactly. You can in this in the uh, sideboard. You need to have. You're gonna need to. Have some sort of my guys don't die spell. Brave the elements. Brave the elements would be awesome. Uh, he played God's willing. We saw that. Yep. That was a good choice. Um, he may want uh, reborn defenses or uh, he reborn defenses traditionally played in these lists because yeah. you're already generating tokens. Exactly. It's a it's a uh, you know it's a way to keep your guys from dying and also advance your board state. Now, which is now, a good thing. You know, we saw Kyle be pretty much in the driver's seat that game. Mm -hmm. It's worth noting, I think, that, that Mike Barlow has certainly a, a much better curve that his deck could hit. He could go turn one, Soldier of the Pantheon, uh -huh. turn two, Voice of Resurgence, mm -hmm. turn three, Smiter, mm -hmm. and that board is a lot more resilient Absolutely. Uh, to what Kyle's doing than what we saw that game. Not that his draw was bad. He had a 3-3 three, three on turn two, a 4-4 four, four on turn three, Yep. Uh, which is what his deck does. Yeah. Now, um, and that's that's a good start, uh, but against Kyle's deck, it's it's less than desirable. This is true. Against Mono Red, that feels really good. Yeah, against it, Kyle, yeah. he's like uh, Kyle says that's fine because my guys get big too, and he's got targeted removal. Yeah, and he's got Thoughtseize to take the giant threat. Yeah, Thoughtseize was great that game. Yeah, 
two thought seizes, hits an advent worm and a boon Seder. Yeah, that 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 was pretty is good. awesome. That's exactly. You know, there's a big debate going on right now. People are talking about it a lot. Is it correct to main deck your thought seizes? Well, because you know what you traditionally hit against mono red. You know, like sometimes they're not going to be very good. Sometimes you can you can you're, you're very capable of thought seizing on turn one, hitting a card, then losing to the top of their deck. Like. There, there's certainly a cost associated with playing a card, as powerful as it is, Thought Seize. Yes. That too what lies. we just saw, I think, from Kyle was a good argument as to why you may want to play it main deck. Yep. It hit a relevant card on turn one, it hit a relevant card later in the game, um, and it, it was very powerful. It, it, and I'm not saying that it necessarily won the game for Kyle, but it certainly uh, kept him in the driver's seat. Absolutely. Uh, Kyle was able to also gain that life back with Scavenging Use yes. by killing his Boon Seder to gain a life. That's half of his thought seeds right there. Yep. And, he, and, you know, we saw the game. Yeah. He it, was able to get that. That life was negligible for Kyle. Man, Scavenging Use is a really good magic card. It's a really good magic card. <laughs> it's a really good magic card. Um, so, it would be nice if uh, Mr. Barlow had, a, had Scavenging Use yeah, on his side. And he may. He just might. That would be a good. That would be a good card to have access to. This if uh, if he was able to pull that out of here, then uh... the old potential <laughs> ooze off. Who has more green mana? Like in Legacy, the Maverick decks back when Maverick was real popular, the matchup mm -hmm, mm -hmm. started to play uh, Gaius Cradle. Okay. And the reason they played Gaius Cradle was that so when they the two players both had a scavenging ooze, the person with the Gaius Cradle could respond. To the other person's activation more often and win the scavenging use fight because that's how powerful that card was in that match. Yes. Of course, we don't see much Maverick in Legacy anymore, but there was a time when it was like one of the best decks in the format and you had to yep. start beating the mirror. Yes. All right. It looks like Kyle's going to six, maybe? I'd say that is what it looks like here. Or he's just really slow at shuffle. Also very possible. It appears that Barlow's okay with his hand. He looks eager to start going. He's like, let's go, Kyle. Hurry up. Let's play some Magic the Gathering cards. That's what he liked to do. He's he's eager. He's ready to go. He'll probably on, be on the play unless he's... Uh, unless, he's this uh, unless he knows more than we know. <clears throat> if he's able to start off with an untapped land this time and play a turn one thread, it'll be a different game. That is a big, I think, step. You know, I think you want to maintain... Your pressure, mm -hmm. you don't want to let Kyle. Excuse me. You don't want to let Kyle feel like he's stabilized and start turning that corner. You really want to keep that pressure up, keep him on the back foot, make him be reactive. Because as much as I said before that I'm calling this particular deck the Rock. No, no turn one threat. Forest go. No turn one thoughts. Use Kyle. Suboptimal. We're gonna see he's a fleece main line. Fleece main line, which is you know Kyle's got a window to kill it. And if he doesn't, it's going to be a real big problem for him. He has to play a lot of removal. Can't quite see what's in his hand. Um, I see. I see a thought sees, I think. Yep. Temple, correct? I think so. So he has another temple in hand. Oh, dear. Oh, my. There's an Ajani. That is an Ajani. That is. A card we've seen do some work. In fact, legit. We've seen that card do some work against wow. Kyle at, on camera in Cleveland. He got, like, one shot at his opponent to Johnny in the green-white matchup. Because that card can just come down and just double-strike something and just kill you with, like, a 5-5 five, five worm token. Like, yes, That can absolutely. happen. And in this case, he has a Boon Seder as well. Mm -hmm. He'll almost certainly pick one of those two cards. Probably get yeah, Johnny. We'll see. He says... It's worth noting that he can't abrupt decay the Johnny. He can. If he can get he his life to high enough where he doesn't just lose to an activation. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Kyle is sick Kyle. and tired of looking at those cards. <laughs> Kyle with no respect for those cards whatsoever. He says, get out of town. Kyle took the Ajani, yes. He appears to have played his temple and... Yep. Because <laughs> he loses on camera to Ajani's. He says, three for you. He didn't scry, I don't think, unless I missed it. When he played his temple. That's true. This okay. is a big turn for Kyle in the sense that 
this is your best opportunity to get that, that fleece man line off the table. Can't quite tell what's in Kyle's hand. Kyle says, Force go. Kyle has an overgrown tomb. He says, Ah, there it is. That That's is what a that hero's is. downfall? Yes, hero's downfall. Um, there's not a lot you can do with that. Ooh, you can. Besides that, that is effective. God's willing it. Counter that hero's downfall. Man, God's willing is a really good magic card. It is. Like it. It's one of those cards that's like really, really good and limited. Uh huh. And then like crosses over and becomes like a playable standard card. It does. It's it's right on the edge. With uh Brave the Elements in the environment, it's yes. clearly the second choice. Although in that case right there, he was able to scry and he put it on the bottom. So maybe that's uh significant. Yeah, uh, it's possible. Uh he's looking for another green. So that scribe might be really good helping you dig for that, that other <laughs> green source. Kyle is playing Deathrite Shaman. He's playing Deathrite Shaman uh, probably because he plays a lot with Troll and can use it as a way to gain life. We haven't seen Deathrite Shaman have a lot of success in Standard. He plays main deck Deathrite Shamans. And this is primarily because there's no fetch lands. No so fetch there's lands. no way to make it a better Bird's Paradise. Boom. Kyle has another Heroes. And we have and a, Rootborn Defenses. A Rootborn Defenses. And there it is. Barlow is still at three land yes. right now. The Scry, I'm sure, was looking for a land. He needs to get that thing indestructible. Yep. Uh, the sooner will be better than later. Mm -hmm. He missed land drop last turn, and then again missed it that turn. Ooh, that life, is a Lifebane Zombie, life bane zombie which is a really good magic card. That is a scavenging user, so he does have oozes excited. of his own. He's that excited. is an experiment one, which is coming to the party way too late he to be any good. You are gone. And we don't know what that is. That's a Celestian Charm. Yeah. So, uh, Life Band Zombie, really good in this matchup, obviously. Yep. Um, as not just a way to just absolutely destroy your opponent's hand, it hits almost every time. But, of course, they can never block it. Mm hmm. Considering it has fear. Intimidate. Intimidate. The new fear. The new fear. So, really, really good. Here comes three for you. No fear, says Barlow. Uh, Kyle says, you know Kyle's what? on the defensive here a little bit. He's willing to trade that he off. He is at 12. He knew about that Selesnia charm. He did. I wonder what he's doing. Maybe he just wanted to get it out of the way. It's possible. Although he does have a scavenging unit in hand. Yeah, I think that may have been the and logic. I think that's his, his thinking. Oh, he says, I'm going to bring that in untapped. What's he got? Did he say go? Surely he didn't say go. It's going to be experiment one. Experiment one and go. He's leaving up, like, God's willing. He's leaving, he's bluffing God's willing. The thing is, is that... I don't know if it's a bluff. I would. He knows he has a scavenging use. Yeah. Or did he, you know, he took it. He took it with the Thotsies. Had to get Kyle's green man. I don't know what that means exactly, but all right. Oh, he's saying that he had to play the experiment one. He had to shock himself because mm, he yeah, needed the green true. mana up. Uh, Barlow's way ahead here. He's at eighteen, and Kyle's at eight. This is true. That that what? that uh, wolf uh, or the lion. Lion has done some work. Has done a lot of work, um, and he's done exactly what we were kind of talking about earlier, which is use his counter spells, mm -hmm. more defenses, and God's willing Swipe. to keep himself in the driver's seat. Yep. Now the thing is, is that. That scavenging ooze is kind of scary. The ooze is creeping up here. It's and Kyle is effectively using the one two crystal scroll to yep. which chip, chip away at his life total. You know, it's certainly a powerful card. Boom! That I believe Reaper Madness. Is a Reaper of the Wilds with enough mana up to make it hexproof. Ooh, that is bad. So you know, the some other question is, what is that boon Yep. Yeah. Some of the questions people say is that uh, <laughs> is Reaper of the Wilds good enough in a world with Desecration Demon? And that four drops. Is it? Kyle's answer is he plays both. Yep. <laughs> Seems fine. Uh, being a 4-5 for four, 4, obviously not a bad body. What's interesting to me is that in this matchup, 
which is potentially a very common matchup. Uh huh. The, the deck's been popular. It's probably very good. Slesnia is uh, very legit. Boom. It dodges Slesnia charm. It does. Where Desecration Demon does not. Does not. And it rules the ground. It does. With its ability to have five toughness and death touch. Yep. So it might actually be, like, interestingly enough, it passes the Selesnia Charm test. It does. Even though it's smaller than Desecration Demon, that might be right what you want. Yep. In the red in the red matchup, you can't tap it with some of your early guys to force your Reckoners and stuff through, and you can't burn it. So, you know, I think it's probably a pretty good magic card. It, it's pretty bizarre to me to talk about a 4-5 with two upsides as being potentially playable. <laughs> well, uh, with this creation demon in the, in the environment, it's, yeah. it's it's a thing to consider. But, like you said, it, it doesn't die to Selesny Charm. It's tough to burn. you got to use more than one spell. And it can be hexproof. Being hexproof uh, is fine. Yeah, it's that is, just fine. That is a real, real good feeling. So... These experiment ones are evolution. showing up a little late to the party, but they're going to evolve. It's evolution, baby. Here you go. Kyle says, use mine. Here you go. I insist, he says. So. Kyle's at nine. I don't know if Barla was a good attack. Uh, Kyle says, I'm going to activate my death right shaman on your spell there to chip you down two more. Kyle's mode right now is... I can just turtle up behind my big death touch guy. Yep. And just burn you to death with my death ray shaman. Mm hmm. Barlow has to find a way through this ground stall in the next five turns. Or he's going to die. No oh, yeah. Defense. He's got like, another death ray shaman. Although they. Uh, he's only got three cards left unexiled in the graveyard. Yes, that's true. It's only worth six damage right now. Uh, one thing that we can't forget is that the Reaper has another ability of whenever another creature dies, go ahead and scry one. That is true. That is not something that you can ignore. No. Especially for a uh, deck like Kyle's. Nope. If he's able to come in here and start popping off guys, bang, bang, bang. Yep. You can just scry, just find that do action. whatever you want. He's got plenty of lands. He can just dig for action. It's just, it's just find stuff. Just find what you need. And that's just a ridiculous card. And, and that's just the kind of creature we get right now where it's just like, I don't even know if it's good enough. Four or five for four with three <laughs> upsides. Well, it has all of the right upsides that you would want in an environment that we're playing right now. I agree. Also, I think it's like an uncommon, right? No, it's rare. Is it? Okay. But it's like a dollar rare. Yeah. For now, <laughs> until... So until, is Desecration Demon. Until Kyle goes uh, viral. So. Nope. Yeah, Desecration Demon was uh, two bucks. Yep. And now it's like More than that. 12 bucks. <laughs> Kyle says, I'm putting down the pencil here. <laughs> this is block with he, pencil. He is daring those creatures to come across the line. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Uh, because we were confused here in the booth about which creature that pencil was going to block. So, um, this is... Man, this game has really gotten to an interesting point. Yep. This attack is really aggressive. Uh, Barlow is swinging in with all all the boys. Of course, he has a whole bunch of mana up. He has four mana up, which could be enough. Depending on what he's got. He says, I'm going to block right here. Nope. Just nope. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an important piece of combat map. Mm -hmm. that the game is going to probably hinge on this attack and this block. <laughs> and we've got a Who's on the Seder? He says we'll put a counter on that. Let's fix that. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Kyle, you're killing us up here. <laughs> Kyle is doing a lot of combat math right now. He is. It's not really something he's used to. It is a really important turn, uh, combat math-wise. You want to make sure your numbers are correct. Especially with Barlow, playing a bunch of flash creatures. bunch of flash creatures. And it has four mana. A bunch of instants that can buff or give protection. Yes. It's basically like the best draft deck in the world. Exactly. Right? It's, it's just like a bunch of big dudes and some combat it's tricks. It's an amazing draft deck. And uh, lots of combat tricks. Exactly. I think we're starting to see. Let's see. Shaping up. Kyle says here. 
Double here. Kyle has to block everybody, basically. Because if he doesn't, he can... Uh, Does Barlow have five mana? Oh, we can't quite see his lands uh, at the bottom. I can't quite see. Because five mana is when you start start threatening to... Four mana, okay. Because five mana. is when you start threatening to bestow Bloon Sator at instant yes. speed. And just kill him with like a with a unblocked with creature. Anybody yeah. at this point. He's nine. But he doesn't have that option. Does not have that option. You gotta think that he has something in hand though. Otherwise he just he can't he wouldn't make this attack. Yeah, exactly. Because he's like, you know, close to dead on the backswing. Alright. Kyle's still thinking. We're almost to the point where I don't know whose stuff is whose. Yep. That's going to be Kyle's plan. It, look, it looks like Kyle is like, I'll take your experiment one. <laughs> I'll just put that over here. <laughs> it's an interesting uh, strategy. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> it is a strong line. Okay. He says the that. The shell game. We call and this the shell game yes, bluff. <laughs> absolutely. He says double block Double that block guy. there. That is, man... But what's out there that, that Barlow could play? He's at f he's got four up. He could have Celestia Charms. Yeah. Or two. If he had two Celestia Charm, that'd only be four damage. Yeah. So Kyle's Tell us that Kyle is taking two. That would be three. Three, I'm sorry. Choosing not to block because one of the reasons, of course, there is that one the experiment one can regenerate. Mm-hmm. Which may not have been a bad path, but he says that's fine. Trades, trades, trades. He, Kyle will get to scry 100 million times. Yes, and that's going to be really hard for Barlow to bounce back from. Man, I really like that double block, the two Deathrite Shamans on the 2-2. Two -two. Yep. Uh, Spare one, I like that block a lot. All right. <laughs> I'm not still... I don't know why the creators have to move around necessarily, but... Kyle's getting the feng shui of this block. Correct. Yes, he's checking out his options. He says, <laughs> "That guy makes see? it all the way to the front." And there you go. <laughs> Kyle's plan is complete. He's completely taken the experiment one and made it his own. <laughs> Barlow's coming off the top with uh, something other. Uh, Joe, could you tell us what Barlow just played there? It did something to give his guy a counter. Okay. Thank oh, you. Boon Sater. Oh, Boon Sater, which does evolve his experiment ones. Yep. Evolve that experiment one. Which now gets to kill it up our shaman and live. He only gets in for four. Putting Kyle down to it it did. Mm -hmm. it did. That did just literally happen in front of us right now. So that was a hell of a magic turn. That was a good turn. <laughs> um cards can't change zones, life totals change, everything you want in a turn of magic. Absolutely. Doing and now we're to serve combat dies. What's dying? Scry one. Scry Let's two. See if Kyle three. remembers his scries after all that ridiculous combat math. Kyle will have taken four damage, it would appear. And uh, he is scrying. He's gonna go scrying. He is looking for love. He's loving Potentially it. in all the wrong places. <laughs> if possible. Because these the 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 scry effect it goes one at a time. Yes. If he hits something that he likes, he's just done. Yeah. He's going to activate it. That's right, Shaman. He thought about it. He's not going to activate it. He's, be, he's saying, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Give me that. He Kyle says, says I'll, I'll deal with your graveyard, buddy. Pal. Um, Kyle likes that card, I think. He's really considering. He really likes it. He's got to say, is my next card down better? Because I got one more scry. Or several more scries. Yeah, he's got a bunch of scries. He lost, uh, what, three guys? Oh, yeah, Four yeah. guys? And he lost, a f I think he was scried. He put them all on the bottom. He's looking for something very specific. <clears throat> if he got a whip of Erebos right here, it would be good. <laughs> <laughs> a whip of Erebos would be real good. Um, another scavenging use would be real good. <laughs> um, he seems very concerned about the state of this game. He's stroking that beard. Yes. Pensively, some would say. Pensive. Barlow has the win on board. You know what would be really good right now for Kyle? What? 
mutilate. <laughs> mutilate would be amazing. <laughs> However. I miss mutilate so much. Yeah, you're not the only one. <laughs> Kyle's thinking hard. He says... He's dead on board. What you got? Well, he's not quite dead, but... You're right, I'm sorry. Uh, he it is would be real close to that. It would be bad. However, Mr. Barlow is only at seven life. This is true. And uh, right here, depending on how this turn goes, what what did Kyle get? No one knows. It's a secret. I uh, this has been a fun game to watch. I really uh, I like the the matchup here. Um, Shut up! He does not have corrupt. Does he? Gray Merchant of Asphodel. You know what would be really good right now for Kyle, also? Corrupt. Um, <laughs> that Mogus' Marauder. Mogus' Marauder. Mogus' Marauder make all his guys intimidate and just crash through and kill him. Um, that would be fine. I like Mogus' Marauder. I've been looking yeah. for a home for it. It'd be really good right here. I don't know if that means that it's playable, but yes. I think Kyle's got a removal spell in his hand. I think it's yeah. a hero's downfall. Yeah, that'll be fine. Does he have uh -oh. Rootborn Defenses? He has a Rootborn Defenses. Rootborn Defenses Man, is pretty good. He has all the white counter spells that you could ever want. One white and two counter target removal spells. And so I think we're seeing here why he's playing God's Willing over Brave the Elements, because look how many green creatures. Brave the Elements does nothing right now. Yeah, exactly. Many of his creatures are white, but many of them yes. are also green. Exactly. Uh, so, which is the debate yeah. in the Slesnia deck? A lot of these Slesnia decks aren't playing Experiment One; they're going with Soldier of Pantheon and right. no Experiment One, right. or they're playing Dryad Millicent, yeah. uh, which would uh, be fine with Break the Elements. Absolutely, these Experiment Ones looked really lackluster the turn they came down, yep. but are now very legitimate threats. Yes, uh, with Boon Seder in the deck, it makes Experiment Ones way better. Yes, because now you're going all the way reliably all the way up to four power. Yes. Um, when before, maybe it was a lot harder to get to that that four. Yes, the, f the four is key. Uh, also, he's playing both Boon Seder and Smiter, where a lot of these Lesnia decks have picked one or the other. Pick one or the other, yep. Uh, Smiter because it's easier to cast in this deck. Yes, it is. And brawls a little better in actual combat. Boon Seder because it's maybe objectively the more powerful magic card. Yes, it is scarier. It's got green haste. Yes. So Kyle is fighting for his life right now. And um, he needs to draw something real good here. <laughs> it has got to be something yeah. amazing. It's got to be a barter. In blood. It is a swamp, swamp. We get, which is exciting for us because you know what that means. We get a pivotal game three. Pivotal game three. The deciding matter. game. So that is um, that's really that's exciting to me. So you're Kyle. You're back on the play. Back on the play. You feel really good about that. You feel really good about that. He, t he appears to be taking out duress. What's yep. he going to put in here? What's he going to put in? I mean, I can't imagine you have removal spells you didn't bring in, right? Uh, he didn't bring in Golgari Charm, which would have been really neat. Yeah? Oh, man. Golgari right? Charm's sweet. Yeah, it's like Soldier of Pantheon. Not uh, good enough. You know what else does? It kills Moon Seder. Uh, Moon Seder's an enchantment. Ah, it is. That's it sweet. Is. I like that interaction a it lot. It does. <laughs> I like... Very good. I yeah. like, I like I Wrath your X1s or Kill Your Moon Saders. Yes. I, like that. I think that's good. I think that's good to bring in. I hope he does. I hope he takes out Duress because that's not a good one. No, that's garbage. It's horrible. I wouldn't say it's horrible. <laughs> no. Because you could totally first turn Duress and, and take that Advent of Worm and feel really good about it. And we got we saw him that, that Mike Barlow was playing... A lot of instants. He, he was. was playing God's Willings and Rootborn defenses and, and, and all this stuff. So, yeah. being able to take one of those before uh, that pivotal attack, for mm -hmm. example, if Kyle could address it out before that combat phase, uh, we, he may have been able to pull that game out. Absolutely. If if even even just knowing it's there, yeah, uh, Kyle can change his play. Not and you know maybe be a little more conservative with your blocks, not get exactly. blown out by no blowouts. Really hoping for to, to trade some creatures, and instead you're just chumping, and you, you can't afford to do that too many no. times no. when your opponent's deck is all huge men. Yes, so we got to see there. Um, uh, you got to be pretty happy with your sideboarding if you're Mike Barlow. All your cards came up kind of on time. Yep, and were enormously impactful. Yes, they all did exactly what they were supposed to. Yeah. Mr. Barlow is happy with his sideboard choices at this point. So, you're Kyle McDaniel. Yes. What has to happen this game for it to go different than that game, too? Um, 
you need to make sure that you curve out. Okay. You can't, you can't miss because that last game he kind of petered out a little bit. A couple of removal spells, and then yep. he kind of ran out of removal spells, and Barlow drew creatures for a couple of turns. Yes. And the game got out of reach. Which, okay. which is to be expected. Sure. Barlow's deck is it's packed like, full of creatures. Or creature saving spells. Right, that's pretty much all it is. Yes. Creatures and combat tricks. So, um, mm. the, uh, the real question is, how good is Lifebane Zombie here? Uh, it's ridiculous. Like, you want Lifebane Zombie, like, on turn 3, turn 4, turn 5, and turn 6, if you can get it. If, yeah, if that's possible, then that's what we'll do. So, I think, I don't know, I don't know if he plays all 4. I hope he does, because, uh, if this Kyle is, has been is... paying any attention, he knows that the metagame is full of green and or white spells. And this is the matchup for it, obviously. And this is, yeah, it almost never misses in this matchup, uh, and like we've already and said, it, raises it very can't effectively. block, and it can't be blocked. So, I think that in a vacuum, mm -hmm. Kyle's on the play. Mm -hmm. He has these really powerful cards in this matchup. He does. I'm going to give him the edge to take, to take this match. I agree. Um, Kyle needs to have a game more like the first game where he has creatures that work together. Yes. If he gets a lot of trolling and scavenging you, it's, uh, it's a rough day for Barlow. It is a synergy-based deck. Yep. His creatures individually are typically not as powerful. Exactly. He's got to pay four mana for a four or five. Barlow's paying three mana for a four four. Exactly. You know, uh, and it's like that at every point yep. on the curve. He's paying two mana for a two one. Barlow's paying two mana for a three three. Exactly. But if his engine gets online, yep. his creatures work together in really powerful ways that don't necessarily cost a lot of mana. Mm -hmm. He can discard creatures, leave a regeneration mana, and still play uh, removal spells. So we're taking some sort of notes. I don't know what's happening. It doesn't matter. We're here to watch the magic. Uh oh. I don't like that hand necessarily from Kyle. I, uh, yep. He says these two lands right here aren't. So it was good. a mutavolt? Mutavolt and a temple. Yep. Can't cast any of my spells. That makes it hard to play. Mutavolt is not a free roll. Not in this No, format. it is not. Uh, as we've seen, the colored mana is not too friendly these days. Um, we are real spoiled. Yes. Coming off of Last Standard. Uh, I remember playing It was a deck yeah. and doing well with it in mm -hmm. Last Standard. It yep. was that Jund Aggro list. Yes. They wanted to go turn one, experiment one, mm -hmm. turn two, Spike Jester. There you go. And do that all the time. All and it the just time. did it. And it did it. Without any complaint. Nope. And you, and you maybe you gave up two life at some point. Yeah. That's okay. Who cares? That's okay. You got your plan. Yeah. Yep. Now we don't have that luxury. We do not. So in my mono color decks, even, mm -hmm. mono red, I've cut down to one mutable. Right. Because the mana requirement is so it, it, yes. for the deck is so high. And, you know, I board them in sometimes, whatever. we got to play them in spell slots in a lot of these decks. Yeah. It's definitely in the creature slot. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a creature that dodges your Wrath of Gods and your Anger of the Gods and that kind of stuff yep. much more than it is a land that also attacks. Exactly. Sort of like how Rug Delver decks and Legacy play Wasteland in a spell slot because they have like one spell in the deck that they can use the colorless mana on. Kyle's got the hand of dislike <laughs> out right now. The hand of disbelief. The hand of throwing it back. Look at him. Look at that anger. Kyle has a curse. You can see it. Our regular viewers will know that Kyle McDaniel very rarely wins on camera. Even in tournaments where he wins, goes like X1. X and 1, guess which one was his <laughs> loss? The only loss he'll get will be on camera. On camera. And he mulligans a lot. <laughs> so He typically now, mulligans in the third game. Yeah. Now, like we said, you know, it's not Swamp like... Swamp Thoughtseize, Barlow's hand is, is pretty stout. Is that a one-lander, though? It is a one-lander. This is going to be an interesting it, battle. Absolutely. Because Kyle's hand isn't very powerful. But Barlow, if Barlow bricks off on a land for a turn or two and gives Kyle time to develop, he could just take this game right yeah, over. If, if he doesn't hit a land here... Uh, yeah, well, one of the things that Thoughtseize is so good about, mm -hmm. or so good, is it punishes mulligans very effectively. Yes, it does. We just saw Barlow mull to six, mm -hmm. keep a one-lander, and Kyle have to take his best card on top of that. So now, Kyle just has to make his land drops, which he has at least Kyle one more land. Got a tomb. 
And he's going to cast a spell. That's really big here. Like, yep. And in it's these a kind good of, one. In these kind of mulligan fights. Uh oh. Um, here we go. Oh, man. Oh, he oh, had a land. forest. But, but a forest. He took his uh, scavenging use, yep. which would have been the only. And now he gets. Oh, oh look at this. Wow. Oh, the lifebane zombie. Oh, oh dropping the hammer. Effective. Barlow drew a fleece main lion. And it is not long for this world, probably. Yeah, it's probably going to leave us. He may take the boon <laughs> uh, <yep. laughs> There you go. That is the decision. <laughs> Since uh, those other cards are fine, but I'm more interested in these two. At this point, you got to yeah. take that, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You got to. You can, you can, you can beat that fleece main lion. Yeah. The boon Seder actually is much more dangerous in a racing situation. He says, oh, yeah, I got a new The scoops school. he can use. But he just brought me at the tap out for it, which means yep. Kyle gets to eat that last creature. Kyle's going to... Oh, Kyle just has drawn a lot of gas. Of forest. So you eat the creature, probably. He says, probably. I'll take... Th oh! He says, I'm going to light yep. him up. He says, let's do this. Let's dance. Uh, oh! He's feeding that scavenging ooze, too. He now. says, I'll eat that. Two more creatures die. He says, I think I block the scavenging ooze there if I block it all, because otherwise you're just putting two more creatures in for his ooze. Well, you're only putting yeah. one in. Oh, that's true. But you're pretty under the gun anyway, though. It's it's a field of block be, because you yeah. killed a land. It's like, oh well, now we're we're closer to even. But yeah. there you go. That life bane zombie just yeah. just ends that game on the spot. Life bane zombie. So God sees life bane zombie. Kyle had a mulligan. Doing a hand he didn't like. Yes. But he drew well, very well. He did. Thoughtsies, uh, scavenging news, life bane zombie was his curve, which is not bad against your opponent's mulligan to six. Mulligan to no six. white mana. That a, is that a whip? What is that? That's that a is a whip of Urvos. Which is a good card. It is a good card. It is good in this matchup. Real good in this matchup. Uh, real good with Kyle's cards. Yep. His, uh, he, I think... Troll. I, I don't know looks if he like plays he's both got a with world me. eater right there. Yeah, it looks like... Is that, is that a world eater? That card's it's awesome. It's yeah, I like that a lot. So, uh, I, it looks like... And shaky, there's shaky. a handshake. Very good. These two guys know each other. They play against each other all the time here. Yes. And uh, Kyle is on a roll. That's two in a row here at FNM that he has won on camera. Yes, he's he's on a roll. He's he's breaking the breaking curse. Breaking the curse. Looked look a grim there for a minute, but it looks like he, he got brought there. in He brought in a Doom Blade and two duress and two whips. And he took out those cards. Probably not a bad choice. Like one of the things about in this matchup is that a whip with a lifebane zombie yeah. is like that he can't your opponent can never block and it gains you three life a turn. Yeah. Like it's just so hard to race. It's like lightning helix. Yeah. Every single turn. So that was our round two mm -hmm. of five. Round two of five. Twenty three players here tonight. Twenty three. And uh, that means five rounds. So we'll get there. We'll get through it with you guys. Uh, traditionally, in the middle round we pick something sweet. So the next round may not be a 2-0. It might be a 1-1 that's, that's playing something a little more off the beaten path. We'll mm -hmm. see if we can track one of those down for you. And uh, I like Kyle's deck a lot. I do too. Uh, I think that Barlow's deck is certainly very powerful. Yeah, Barlow's deck is very legit. And um, he has a good chance of possibly x one in this tournament after this loss. Yeah. I uh, hear because the deck is very good. It's got a very powerful linear strategy that can just push a lot of decks over. Uh, Kyle's deck is a little little more of a brew, which uh -huh. doesn't surprise anyone. Yep. And uh, I, think I like it a lot. Um, yeah, I, I like the cards, how they work together. They're all friends. Yep. They're all and a bunch of friendly cards. We'll keep an eye on both these players as the night goes on. Yep. Be sure to join us for round three. Round three coming right up. Presented by Dayton Magic Club. I'm Ryan. That's and I'm Noah. Noah. And we'll see you next round. Thanks for joining us.